Genesis chapter 11. We're going to look at a period that paganism flourished. And really the seed of every false religion and false church and false cult took hold in Genesis chapter 11. Uh, the very term, and Brother Belcher mentioned Catholicism, the very term Catholic means universal. And uh, universalism and uh, the ideology of paganism all began during the time period of Genesis chapter 11. Let's begin reading. The Bible says in verse 1, In the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city therefore it is the name of it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, whether in track form or the complete uh, unadulterated version, we are thankful that your word is going out. We are thankful for the preaching of it. We are thankful for the teaching of it. We are thankful for the passing out of it. We are thankful that it is through your word that faith is developed in our hearts. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is through your word that, Lord, we are begotten again, the incorruptible seed. It is through your word that we are strengthened, that we have a foundation, that, O oh Lord, we understand... Uh, through your word that you formed the world. Everything we know, we know because of what thus saith the Lord. And God, we bless you for it. Now, Father, as we've come today, it's been an unusual day, but Lord, we need unusual days every now and then to remind us, O oh Lord, the importance of worshiping you and not worshiping uh, a ritual or a ceremony. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you would help us. I'm pleading for the Holy Ghost to set down amongst us. I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to understanding. And God, I do pray that, Lord, the presence of the Holy Ghost would uh, revive the saint of God and convict the sinner. I pray that we'd see lost people saved today. And I pray that the saints of God would ever be strengthened. And, Lord, when we leave from this place, we would go with purpose of heart to be what you would have us to be, and that is a light and that is salt to this lost and dying world. God, thank you for truth. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, and thank you, Lord, for your help. Now, bless now. Use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here we find the story of the Tower of Babel. I want you to notice, first of all, their actions. In verse number 3, the Bible says, And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Look at verse 5. And, uh, um, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. 
My dear friends, we uh, think of people in years gone by as being Neanderthals and not knowing much. Uh, But can I say that man has always had an intellect? Can I say Adam uh, was a brilliant man? Uh, 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 Adam had the mind of Christ before he fell to sin. Uh, Adam's the one that named everything that's been named. Uh, uh, Can I say uh, 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 they just weren't folks that were ignorant. Uh, uh, For Noah to build the ark uh, uh, took great uh, uh, wisdom. Yes, God gave him the blueprint, but uh, in order for him to be able to construct uh, trellises and be able to do all the work uh, to build that great structure. Uh, And uh, can I say Cain had uh, 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 wisdom uh, and and built cities. Uh, And can I say here these men were not ignorant. Uh, uh, They were able to accomplish things. uh, And their actions caused them to build a city and a tower. Can I say a house divided against itself will not stand. But when people are united about any cause, they can accomplish great things. Would to God that God's people would be united uh, 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 for the gospel's sake uh, and united uh, uh, to seek for the presence and power of God uh, that we might be effective witnesses, uh, that we might truly shine in this lost world, uh, that we might truly be soul winners, uh, that we might truly be vassals and instruments that God could use. Uh, Yet, uh, it seems like we're united about one thing, that we're all too busy to do anything. Hmm? Hmm? We think we're doing God a favor by coming to church. And yet, all God has asked us to do is take the gospel to every creature. Hmm? We see their actions. They accomplish something tremendous. They did not have industrial equipment like we have, yet they built a city and a tower. I don't know how big this tower was, but they were building a tower to go to heaven. Mm. Uh, I imagine in their day you would call it a skyscraper. We see their actions. Notice their arrogance. Look in verse 4. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven... And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They were arrogant enough to think that they were uh, uh, wise enough, that they had the ability uh, uh, to build a tower all the way to heaven so they could walk in and kick God off the throne. Mm. That's pretty arrogant, is it not? To think that their own actions, their own ability, their own works could get them to heaven. We see their actions, we see their arrogance. Now notice they're availing. Oh, they built a tower. But look what happens in verse 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. In other words, they quit building the city because they couldn't communicate. You know, the Bible said God chose the base things to confound the wise. Now, in our thinking, uh, we would think if God wanted to straighten them out, wouldn't he send a lightning bolt? Yeah. Wouldn't he rain fire down, burn up the city and show them I'm God? Yeah. No, God just done very, something very simple. He just made it to where they couldn't communicate. He confounded their language and when they could not see eye to eye and could not communicate and could not come together, they dispensed. Yeah. Yes, hmm? You know what the devil strives to do to God's people? Divide us. It's very effective. Where did the devil learn that? He learned it from God. Mm. The devil always tries to imitate the things of God. Well, I'm interested in the mindset of these people. I mentioned they were arrogant to think that their works could get them to heaven. Now, can I say this, that many today rationalize that their own good works are good enough to get them to heaven. Are they not just as arrogant? Yes, sir. To think that if they 
live a good moral life or to think if they attend a, a church uh, or a religious organization to think that if they give money uh, uh, to think that if they help fellow man if they help the poor uh, uh, to think that if uh, 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 they do things like getting baptized or being a, a member of a, a church or an organization uh, uh, that that alone is good enough to get them to heaven are they not building their own so called spiritual tower are they not effectively saying, I don't need God, I don't need Jesus Christ, I don't need the cross and the shed blood of Calvary, I don't need to humble myself and repent and accept Christ, I can get there my way. Are they not building their own tower? With that thought, I want to preach on this. I want to preach on Babylonian building blocks. I want to preach on the so-called stones that people are using to build their own spiritual towers to get to heaven. Stones that they are basing their hope for eternity on. Stones that they think or stones that are causing them not to get to go to glory. Can I say the first one is pride. You know what, people, if they hear the gospel and they reject it and want to do it their way, it's all because of pride. Yeah. Mm. Can I say God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble? Can I say one of the very things that God hates is pride? The Bible says in Proverbs 21, 4, And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Can I say God does not accept sin? God does not sweep sin under the carpet, nor does God accept pride as a building block to heaven. Jesus Christ died to forgive us of our sin. Uh, hey, God made him that knew no sin to become sin, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Uh, uh, it took our sin, uh, uh, that is what it held Jesus on the cross. Uh, he took our offenses, he took our ordinances, uh, he took our sin, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all, uh, and he nailed it to the cross. Uh, he shed his blood uh, in order to redeem us from our sin and my dear friends God will not accept anything else other than what he did and yet when we say we'll get to heaven our way our pride is one of those stones we're trying to use in our spiritual tower Proverbs 16 5 says everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord though hand join in hand he shall not be unpunished. You may think that your good works is going to get you to heaven, but that first stone you're building on is something called pride, and God is going to break your pride in hell. And God will not let the proud go unpunished. Pride is one of the stones that people are using in their spiritual towers, their good works to get them to heaven. I thought of another stone that people may... Uh, used for self-justification. It's the stone of proprietary entitlement. I know what's best for me, and God will let me in heaven because I'm entitled to go there. I'm an American, therefore I get to go to heaven. I'm a Baptist, therefore I get to go to heaven. My grandpa was a preacher, therefore I get to go to heaven. My parents were uh, uh, charter members of the church, therefore I get to go to heaven. Hey, I was raised in church and went to Sunday school, therefore I get to go to heaven. I uh, bought Billy Graham's book, therefore I get to go to heaven. I watched Joel Osteen on TV, therefore I get to go to heaven. By the way, I saw a little thing with Joel on it the other day. He had that Kanye West in his service I saw it on Fox that guy was singing nothing but rap music and they was jumping up and down and having himself a spell you can't tell me the demons of hell wasn't in all that mess but anyway getting back to Joe I seen him the guys had some work done he smiled so much that his face was falling so I guess he got Botox or something because his cheeks are all puffed out I mean he's a mess huh 
So y'all need to buy some more books so he can get some better Botox, all right? It's a mess. Just thought I'd throw that in. Hmm? You can buy all Joel's books and believe every day's a Friday and you'll die and go to hell. I got news for you. You can buy every book that comes out of the sword of the Lord and die and go to hell. You can have a King James Bible in your lap and read it every day and die and go to hell. Uh, uh, if you think you're entitled to heaven, I tell you what we's entitled to. Uh, we's entitled to be in the hell. That's the only thing we deserve. Uh, but I'm glad, hallelujah, for the grace of God. Uh, I'm glad God in His mercy uh, looked down and saw our destitute condition uh, and sent His darling Son uh, to die on the cross and make a way uh, that sinners could be saved from their sins. Uh, you're not entitled to heaven hmm? a lot of people are rebuilding on that block they think they're something it's a, it's a terrible thing to esteem yourself better than what you really are we were made of the dust of the earth and you know working over to funeral a little bit doing funerals a lot and seeing folks you know what everybody goes out the same way nobody takes anything with them and you know what? The rich and the poor like, they end up in a coffin. Hmm. You're not entitled to anything but an eternity of misery, woe, and torment without Jesus Christ. I thought about something else. People are trying to justify themselves and build upon the stone of principles. People think because they have standards and morals that God's going to let them in heaven. Oh, they have the mindset God's going to weigh all my good points and traits and all my bad points and traits and my good's going to far outweigh my, my bad and God's going to let me in. Peter's going to be at the gate and let me in. I got news for you. Peter's not at the gate. Hmm? Listen. Uh, the writer of Revelation said there was a window opened and he heard come up hither I don't see where we go through the gate it's got gates but New Jerusalem will be in glory for New Jerusalem's revealed you do understand that don't you listen folks got all this mindset that their standards and their morals and their, their fiber you know folks say because I was a Republican I'm going to heaven because I was a Democrat I'm going to heaven I got news for you most of Washington ain't going to heaven uh, uh, I'm blood washed that's why I'm going to heaven uh, people got their standard well, I, I belong to the lodge and I belong to the elks and the mooses and I did this and I did that and I did this and I helped here and I helped there and friend you're going to die and go to hell not about your standards, not about your morals, not about your moral compass not about uh, uh, your viewpoints your opinions or all those things it's not about that your principles will send you to hell. Hmm? I've known people that walked right, talked right, spit right, dressed right, looked right, did the part, went through all the motions, knew all the hymns, uh, 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 memorized scripture, uh, 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 could do sword drills, did all kinds of things, uh, uh, but was sitting in a church pew and realized they was lost. Uh, the Holy Ghost convicted them, uh, and thank God, uh, uh, got gloriously born again. What a blessing! Uh, they lived a clean life, but they were lost. Your principles won't take you to heaven. I thought about another stone that people use to justify themselves in their own spiritual tower. Now, they'll never say, I've got my own spiritual tower, but in action, that's what they're saying. Their actions speak louder than their words. But it's the stone of pragmatism. Hmm. Logic, reasoning. Hmm. They're reasonable in their thinking. They're rational in their, not only thought process, but actions. And they're relevant. They're up to speed on everything. And logically thinking, well, I do okay. I'm going to make it. You've heard me say many times, faith is the opposite of logic. And Jesus said, except we become like a little child, we'll not enter in. It takes a childlike faith to put your faith and trust and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? 
And that's all it takes. Amen. It's to believe that Jesus was my substitute. And if I repent and accept Him, He'll save me. Now the older we get, we complicate that. We just can't understand how God would save us like that. Certainly God would want all of my expertise. And certainly God would want all my good works. And certainly God would want me to jump through this hoop and do that. He just wouldn't expect me to believe. That's too simple. Well, God made it that way so everybody could get in. If you had to jump through some hoops, some folks can't jump. You know, I used to have a jump shot. Now it's a set shot. Hmm? I don't have a shot anymore at all. My little girl was in the seventh grade and started beating me in horse. I quit playing. By the way, she's number nine in the country in scoring right now. Just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, I don't feel bad with her beating her. Beating me. Audrey, you beat me. I'm going to feel bad. You're just getting started. huh? Listen. We logically reason ourselves into everything. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Mm -mm. You think on it long enough, you think you look like Tom Cruise and are built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. You look in the mirror long enough, you'll find no faults. Mm. And you'll logically reason and rationalize and be relevant in the thought that you are so wonderful. God's surely going to take you. My dear friend, you'll die and go to hell. Being pragmatic. Hmm. Have you ever heard the term of overthinking something? Hmm. You ought to watch me and Brother Ray work at the house. We're doing a little project. We're overthinking everything. One, because I don't know what I'm doing. And number two, he'd been in the office so long he forgot what he's doing. <laughs> So my dog's in, in control and in charge of the, of the construction project going on at the house. Hmm. What can I say? When it comes to salvation, a lot of people overthink it. Amen. It's so simple. Amen. All you got to realize is you're a sinner. You were conceived in sin. In sin, your mother brought you forth. You was born a sinner. Uh, even babies are sinners. I know they're precious and they're beautiful. Some aren't. I've heard say, there's no such thing as an ugly child. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not to that mama. But there's some I'm praying, God, you got to do something with that mess. Uh. But them little precious darlings, they come out of the womb, liars. Hmm. You say, oh, no, they're precious. No, that's why they'll cry and you'll check and their diaper don't need change. You just fed them, you burped them, everything's good. They don't need anything. No, you've spoiled them holding so much. When you lay them down, they're squalling. They, there's nothing wrong with them. They just want to be held. They're lying to you. Yeah. Mm. Amen. You were born a sinner. And as you grow, you get better at sinning. But then everybody reaches an age of accountability. Yes, sir. Well, not everybody. Some people will never reach it. Some people are born special with learning disabilities. But by and large, most people, listen to me today, you came to a point of an age of accountability when you do the difference between right and wrong. At that point, you're guilty before God. You're a sinner. But I got good news. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Jesus loved sinners. He hates sin, but he loves sinners. And he went to the cross and he died for your sin, your personal sin. Amen. And all he asks in return is that you believe that he died, was buried, and rose again. He's the Lord. He's the Savior. Sure. Believe he'll save you from your sin if you ask him to save you. That's right. And if you believe in your heart that he'll save you and you ask him to save you, guess what? He'll save you. Yep. 
Now I know that don't make sense. It don't make sense to put your faith in a man that lived 2,000 years ago and he was more than a man. He was the God man. He was all man, but he was all God. He lived a sinless, perfect life and he died for your sin, uh, went to Calvary uh, uh, for your sin. Uh, why would somebody die for you that never knew you? But friend, he looked ahead in time and he did know you. He's the one that made you in the womb. Uh, and friend, he loves you. It don't make sense to believe in him. Uh, it don't make sense to come out uh, and listen to a man holler, spit, and scream at you and tell you you're a sinner but friend that's what God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe friend if you'll just believe on the Lord he will save you Amen. say how do you know that 45 years ago he saved me Paul said that he was the chief of sinners if he could save the chief he can save everybody else my dear friends right. you just got to be willing to be saved yeah. right. well, too many Spend so much time trying to figure it out. You can't figure out how a holy God would love a wicked sinner, but He did. You can't figure out how God would take on flesh and go to a cross and die because He had to die for your sin and become a kinsman redeemer to save you. You can't figure all that out, but He did. You can't figure out how God would save you, then change you, and take up His residence in you. You can't figure any of that out, but that's what He does. But friend, you can't explain to me how a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk. You can't explain that to me. There are some things just bigger than us. We can't understand. But if you'll believe it, God will save you. Hmm. Can I say this? Some use the self-justifying stone of piety. Religion. Well, I'm religious. So was Nicodemus. He was one of the richest men of his day. He had the first five books of the Bible committed to memory, do you? He never missed a service, do you? He was always dressed exactly right, are you? He never did anything that offended the law, do you? Yet he came to Jesus by night and said, What must I do to be saved? Jesus said, You must be born again. Religion won't send you to heaven. It'll just send you to hell as a smart sinner. All religion does is bring damnation. Jesus Christ come to give life and life more abundantly. Can I say this? Some use the stone of self-pity. There are some people who always want to be pitiful. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. They always want attention. They always want somebody making over them. They always, and they think God's going to do that. Because they hear all this uh, ecumenical crowd and all this charismatic crowd and all this feel-good crowd like uh, Joe Wolstein tell about how much God is love and how much God loves you and how uh, uh, God shows mercy and how God accepts you just as you are. And by the way, God is love and God does love you and God does show mercy and God does love you just as you are, but He don't take you that way. Amen. Because when you get saved, He changes you. Hmm. They leave that part out. They leave that part out about you must be born again and you must repent. They talk about turning over a new leaf and, and, and changing your lifestyle uh, and, and, and uh, 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 becoming a, a, a believer. Oh, I, I got news for you. You can believe in a lot of things and die and go to hell. Can I say every devil in hell believes that Jesus Christ is Lord? Hmm? It's more than believing that He is. You've got to believe on Him. You've got to accept Him as your Savior. But there's a lot of people always wanting pity. Always wanting, woe is me, and I, I've got it so bad, and it's so terrible, and please show me mercy, God. He's already shown you mercy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, but it's a great day when you get over yourself yeah. Come on. and you see who God is yeah. and that God would love you in your state. Right. And when you trust in Him, I got good news. You have no sad tales to tell. God's been good to me. We was talking about Sunday school class. God's blessed. Boy, God's been good to us. We was having a good time in Sunday school. Brother Phil's talking about how good God's been to him. Miss Crystal messed up the Sunday school class, but everybody else is having a good time. <laughs> thought about this lastly. There's a stone that a lot of people are using, and it's going to send them to hell it's the stone of preoccupation so many people are preoccupied with life they don't even consider eternal life 
There are a lot of people that intend to get right with God. They're just so busy. They just don't. If you're not careful, you'll become preoccupied in your Christian life. You'll get so busy living, you'll forget about what life's really supposed to be about. It's about telling others how to have eternal life. You won't take time to pray. You won't take time to read your Bible. You won't take time to worship when you come to church. You're so preoccupied you come to church and you sit down and relax because it's the first time you sat down in four days. So many people are so preoccupied. When Ned and I got married, Houston Road was two, road, two lanes. Uh, 18 wasn't very big. And you could get through Florence. Now, getting through Florence is a nightmare. Amen. There are banks everywhere. How, do, how come we need 50 banks in Florence? Yeah. Who's got all the money? That's what I want to know. Huh? They're expanding every road. We got 70 hotels in Florence. I didn't know we were so wonderful and so popular, huh? Restaurants everywhere and people everywhere. That sign lies. It says there's about 19,000 people living in Florence. Well, where do they all come from? There's 100,000 here every day. There's 11,000 cars. That's the truth. 11,000 cars go up Pleasant Valley Road every day. That's why they're expanding it. Where does all these people come from? But watch people. I watch people. Everybody's in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. Get out of my way. Everybody's in a hurry. Hurry. Rush. 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 Why don't they uh, uh, time the traffic lights better so we don't have to hit any of them? I mean, we're, everybody's in a hurry to go everywhere but to heaven. Everybody's preoccupied. Huh? Especially now. Lord have mercy. Black Friday's coming. I learned a couple years ago the greatest thing is online shopping. But you know what? Everybody's learned that secret, so now you can go to the mall and get in and out at a good time. We're so preoccupied. We're preoccupied with our jobs. We're preoccupied with the kids. We're preoccupied with our schedule. We're preoccupied with this and with that and with this and that. Now, we make announcements for months in advance, and still revival meet will show up, and people can't come because they've got something on their schedule. I mean, everybody's preoccupied. Blah, 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 blah. But sinners are preoccupied, and they're not taking time to think. Today may be their last day on earth. You know why gospel tracts are effective? Because they can read them quickly. And because they've not seen anything like it. Amen. They're in their mode of life and all of a sudden they get this tract and they say, what is this? And they read it and it makes them think, wait a second, I haven't prepared for that. Mm. That stone of preoccupation is going to send a lot of people to hell. The Bible says in the last days there will be a famine for the hearing of the Word of God. Can I say it didn't say there would be a famine for the preaching of it. Do you know there's more preaching available today than ever before in history? And with the Internet, you know, I can go on the Internet. I can hear uh, uh, men that I've got their books. I can hear them preach. They've got recordings of them from day. I've got the book, Sodom Had No Bible by Leonard Ravenhill. I mean, it's a, it was an, an immaculate book that came out in the 60s. Everybody was like, wow, I can actually hear him preach the message online. And yet, all the preaching, all the Bible studies, all the information going out. We live stream our services. Brother Aaron will tell me about people that are listening to it. And I know right now people all over the world are watching our service. It amazes me. But how come our doors aren't busting open with people coming to get saved? Because people are so preoccupied they don't take time to hear what thus saith the Lord. And it's going to send a lot of people to hell. Now listen. Jesus simply said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me ask you a simple question. What are you trusting in to get to heaven? What are you putting your faith in to get to heaven? The sad commentary about this account of Scripture in Genesis chapter 11, it is still propagating its gospel throughout the world. 
And yet the good news, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is still not being preached everywhere in the world. People are still trying to earn their way to heaven. Half a mile up the road, the Lutheran church, they'll tell you, if you come to their church service and take their wafer, that's faith and you'll get to go to heaven. Around the corner, the church of Christ will tell you, if you're baptized, you'll get to go to heaven. Hmm? The Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, they're all lining back up with the Catholic church. You've got to take their Eucharist and you've got to go through their rituals and hopes of getting to go to heaven. You better hope the priest isn't drunk when you die so he can pray you into heaven. <coughs> Yet the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. The rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. What are you trusting in to get to heaven? Friend, if it's not Jesus, you can put your faith and trust in him today. We're going to have an invitation. <clears throat> we're going to invite you to come and accept the Lord Amen. you say preacher I don't know how to be saved we've got people to take a Bible and show you how to be saved if you're not 100% sure that you're saved why don't you come today and get saved aren't you tired of being miserable aren't you tired of not having any hope any peace, any joy you can have all that today if you put your faith in the Lord if you're here today and you are saved, why don't you come and ask the Lord to help you to get more invested into spiritual things so other people can get saved. Why don't you ask the Lord to give you a burden for sinners to be saved. Amen. I promise you, if God's people get a burden, we'd see more people saved. So why don't you come ask God to help you. We're going to do this. Jordan, why don't you just come up and play Amazing Grace. And let's all stand. We're going to have prayer. If you're not saved, why don't you come get saved? Well, as I've been preaching this message, I just feel my heart there's some that's not saved today. You can be. Quit trying to get to heaven your own way and come and get the only way you can get through Jesus Christ. My folks are coming and praying. Why don't you come trust the Lord? Christian friend, why don't you come and ask God to give you a burden for somebody to get saved? Somebody you can be a light to, a witness to. How long has it been since you grabbed a handful of tracks and gave them out? Why don't you come and ask God to help you with that? I don't know. But he's getting ready to play Amazing Grace. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. God, it's only by your grace I'm not in some church trying to work my way into heaven. God, I'm glad for the truth. And I'm glad for the glorious gospel. Lord, you said through the Apostle Paul, that if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Satan hath blinded the minds of them, lest the glorious gospel of Christ should appear unto them. So, so Father, I pray. There's somebody here who's been blinded by religion or blinded by anything else. They'd realize today they're building on sinking sand. And God, they'd come give their faith and their heart to the Lord Jesus and trust in Him. Be saved. God, I pray for Christians, get a burden. Get a burden for sinners to be saved. Oh, God, help us this day. <coughs> Father, we need you. God, we can't do anything without you. So, Lord, we give this invitation to you. ask you to speak to hearts. I pray your will would be done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.